is good. So thank God for this opportunity. Thank you, VJ, for what God has put in your heart and you have shared together with us. And uh, it's a privilege that I may share together with us as well. Because God is really faithful. And uh, I've been picked from where VJ talked of that kind of a a heart to serve God, winning souls for Christ. <coughs> I've come, I want to talk together with us as the man that has come in this place carrying that kind of a mantle mm -hmm. of preaching that gospel. <coughs> sometimes you look at the being a man and finding the issues going around you and you question, am I truly a man that I think I am? Things don't seem to move the way I think they should move, and you question why you are who you are. But God can drill a man. He can thrill a man, and then he can skill a man. Hallelujah. I want to talk of a man on the run. A man on the run. And for a man to run, you don't just run. You can either run to win or you are running to look for answers. Mm. And when you are running, you are having a lot of questions you need answers to. Read together with me the book of Jonah and uh, chapter number 4. And from verse number one to eleven, I'm talking of a man on the run, and uh, then within a few minutes I will be uh, winding it up. Amen. How can this man run, and why do people find themselves running? Mm. And if you run, is it right or is it wrong, or did you plan to run? Jonah, Jonah. Yeah, yeah. Right. I want to but it, it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he became angry. So he prayed to the Lord and said, Ah, Lord, was not this what I said when I was still in my country? Therefore I fled previously to Tarshish. For I know that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, one who relents from doing harm. Therefore now, O oh Lord, Please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. What you need to understand, this is a man that has gone through some time. Uh, and the Jews that were living in Nineveh has gone through some tough times. Mm -hmm. And extra biblical literature in a kind of book called Tobit will give you such kind of a story. When a Jew had died, you were not allowed to, kill, to bury them. And Tobit was going in the night to say, I can't leave my people hanging on this space. And then he was taking them and burying them in the night. Until they say that this man has been burying these people and we want these people, to, their bodies to be hanging around the field for people to see that we hate them. Until Tobit had to run to exile. And then God is coming to Jonah saying, those people who are doing this to your people mm. warn them that whatever they have done has come to me. And he's saying, Lord, you have given me a difficult task. And you know the story when Jonah was running to Tarshish that he was swallowed by a fish, found himself in Nineveh. When he, he did not even have a, pl a plan someone to preach to the Nineveh. Because when you are on the run, you don't want to go where you are supposed to go. You are saying, I can't go there. So he arrived there without unprepared someone. Maybe with the clothes having some kind of a, a grass on it. He went on to preach to tell them, if you don't change, 
And when they have, if the gospel has been preached and the people are, the, the king is saying to the, the president, he's saying, let us return, let us repent. And said, including animals were repenting. Mm -hmm. No one was allowed to go and eat. And God was merciful. And now of chapter 4, you're finding a man angry. You know, you have gone to preach the gospel so that people receive Christ. And then you get them, they are going to receive Christ. You get the opposite. You are saying, no, this was not supposed to happen. They have killed our people. They are all supposed to die. I don't want them to repent. And now he has the argument with God. Is this not what I say when I was still at home? So he was not happy with what was going on. Therefore now, verse 3. Oh Lord, please take my life from me. For it is better for me to die than to live. Sometimes you can wish to die when you are asked to do something that is difficult for you to do. A person has killed your mother, has killed your children, has killed your people. And then you're saying, you're going, someone is telling you, you just have to forgive this person. It, how easy is that to forgive someone who is taking the people that you love? You are the father. Someone is taking your child, killing him. How easy is that to forgive such kind of a person? Yeah. And this is the scenario you find Jonah in. He said, <laughs> you have given me a difficult task to carry. How can I forgive this kind of a person? And you say, no, I'm ready. It's better for me to die than to see these people repenting. Because what they did for us, let it happen to them. Verse 7. But as morning drawn the next day, God prepared a woman and so damaged the plant that it withered. And it happened when the sun arose that God prepared a vermin east wind. The sun beat on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. When then he wished death for himself and said, it is better for me to die. You know, when he was now sitting outside the city gate, <coughs> people, he was watching to see what was going to happen to these people. Because what has happened to us is very painful and we cannot, I cannot hold it. I can't, and that is why he said, I know you. You know, he's complaining that God is so merciful. Now, it is not easy to accept when things happen that way. You say, no, this is too much for me to carry. And when he got that kind of a, a tree overnight that gave him shade, the Bible says, uh, when he was sitting, verse 5, that's when Jonah was happy. The only first incident when Jonah became happy because there was that shade. But when that has gone, he said, I better die. I don't want it. And then God is asking him, is it okay? Is it right for you to be angry? Because you did not plant this tree. It came up overnight and it withered the following day. Mm. How much more if I can forgive the Ninevites, about 120,000 people? How much more is that if I can forgive them so that they can return? You can be on a run. Mm -hmm. Things can be hard. Okay. Things can challenge you on the way. Mm -hmm. People can give up on you. People can look at you and see that you have no meaning in life. And they see as if there's nothing that can be found in you. There's nothing tangible that can be seen in you. People look at you, they see a failure. They see a person who has got no way forward. People look at your education, they say they are an educated more than you. They look at your standard of how you do things. They say the way you do them, you better learn it. But he says... In that last verse, you know, it's very fascinating that the book of Jonah ends with a question. God is asking him, how much more 
If I can forgive these people, then the book of Jonah ends with Jonah not replying. It ends. And should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, where are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right, right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle. That is the end of the book of Jonah. He's not replying. God is asking him a question. God is talking to us, talking to you, and asking, I know the things that has can, uh, that might have come on your way. And what can make a difference in you? I have this poem here. It's talk of how God can drill and thrill and skill a man. It says this. When God wants to drill a man and thrill a man and skill a man, when God wants to mold a man and play the noble's part, when he yearns all his heart to create so great and bold a man that the world shall be amazed, watch his methods, watch his ways. How he ruthlessly perfects whom he royally elects. How he hammers him and hurts him. And with mighty blows converts him into tall shapes of clay which only God understands. While his tortured heart is crying and he lifts his beseeching hands. How he bends but never breaks. When he's good, he undertakes. How he uses whom he chooses. And which every purpose fuses him. By every act induces him. To try his plan out, God knows what he's about. God can thrill, drill, and skill a man. Mm -hmm. The things that you go through that you are crying, there are testimonies that has gone on here. There are a lot of things that are some words you can't explain them. The things that are making you cry, that I don't find myself happy even with saying what I am saying. You, you, are, ab you are about to cry. I do, I do not expect my son to be this way. I do not expect my wife to be this way. I do not expect my daughter to be this way. You find yourself in such kind of a pain oh. as a father, as or as a firstborn in your home, or a person, a noble person in your, in your own family. As a man, we carry a lot of responsibilities. When things don't work, they don't point for the women. They point at the man. When things don't work in your house, they look at you as a man who has failed. But in the view of that poetic message, it says, when God wants to use a man and thrill a man, look at his method. He, he toss you left, right, and center. And he tells you, even when you break, when you are being tossed, you are being twisted, you are bending, but you don't break. Things are shaping your life, shaking you, until sometimes you cry, you see tears rolling down your eyes, but that does not kill you. Amen. It gives you the momentum to know that this is what I am. I was born for. This is what I was made to be. And this is what has made me to be who I am. That when I stand before people, like the way I stand now, you are able to say, I am not who I am the way you see me now. But I have been shaped by failure and the hardship that I have gone through. Amen. That when I pray, I don't pray for people to see me. I don't sing for people to see me. I sing because I know God. I don't pray because people pray. I don't cry because people cry. I know who I am in Christ Jesus. The hope of glory. The newness of power in me. I am not myself. I know where I came from. I know where I am. And I know where I am going. When God drills you, that is why when you cry, don't give up, brother. Amen. When tears are rolling down your eyes, your cheek, you feel tired, it is okay. okay. 
they are remaining a landmark for you. So that when we meet you one day, we will say, there was a day you were crying, Richard. But today, you are rejoicing. Amen. Because it's a reminder of where you came from. And when you realize you get your position, you now say, where I am, I know who I am. And the Christ in me is able to transform things. And when God is ready to thrill you, to make you a noble person, watch his ways, watch his methods. The way God is going to use Wiki, going to use Pastor Mike, Pastor Johnny, all, all of us, we have different methods. The way Pastor Wiki fell, the way Seven fails, it doesn't matter. A God who knows how to pick you from your failure, to show people that the way you fail is the way I begin. God begins from where you fail to prove to the world that he is God. Sometimes we have questions we don't have answers to. Like the way Jonah is asking, God is asking him questions, he cannot answer. He says, I can't take it. I cannot receive my people that I lost back. But you're saying, I want to see this God. So I just want to rise up on our feet as we just winding up together. I just want us to know God is operating in a way like no other. He's doing great things in you. God is drilling you, drilling me, making us to know that the failure, the area, the challenges of life, where we have come from, and all that has happened in our lives is not about us. It's not about what happened to us. It's about where God is taking us. He's using our failure to make our future. And God is using our present to correct our future. And he's using our past to remind us of where we came from. It is not to remind us that uh, that is how bad we are. It is just a reminder that we were there, but we are no longer there. We are going. And where we are, that is not where we are. We are going somewhere better. And we are going to see the glory of God. And that is the difference of who you are. You as a man, you are running as a man, running the race. Don't give up. Rising up as a man, fighting this race. You are able to win. I am able to win. And this is who you are, a man ready for the race. Fighting as a man, fighting as a man, rising up like no other day. And then you find yourself to just that, that God that you know is doing something special in you to make something new in your lives. Because that is what we, we, we then were, what we got from Pastor Johnny, Annie, and uh, even what was being shared here with Pastor Vic. Everyone, we are looking at this God who is speaking to us. So you can look at him, the challenges that you face. They are good for us. They are good for us. All that we have pay, faced in our lives. So you can just give your, you just raise your hands to him. And just to worship him the way you want. Just thanking him for where you come from. All that is going on. God is taking charge of everything about you. It's not about all of us. It's about the place where we came from. That God